Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how to use this action right here, schedule API workflow on a list. Now there are many reasons why you would want to use this action. I'm going to take you through one example that I see come up pretty frequently. So I'm going to jump over to my preview here. I have a list of products here. Okay, each product has a different cost associated with it and each product also has um, an assigned owner. Okay, so now let's say that this app allows me as the user to make some product selections. Okay, so I've got a multi drop down element here. I'm gonna select sunglasses, um, headphones, and let's do water bottle. All right, now what I want to happen when I click this button is I wanna increase the cost of the selected products, these three only, by 10%, okay, and that's 10% of the existing price. So for sunglasses, we wanna increase it by a dollar, for headphones, we want to increase it by $2.40, and water bottle should go up by $0.70. Cents. We also want to send an email to the owner. We want to notify them um, and let them know of the new change for their product. So Eduardo's going to get an email, um, and John actually is the owner of both headphones and water bottle, so he's going to get two separate emails. Okay. Now this is something that you can't do in your regular workflows because you're making individualized changes to an unknown list, all right? We can't anticipate what the items are gonna be that the user is gonna select, nor can we anticipate how many of them there are gonna be. So um, this action, schedule an API workflow on a list, is this is what we wanna use in order to run a series of actions on an unknown list of items, especially when the changes that we're making or the actions that we're running are specific to each uh, product in this case, okay? So what are we gonna do here? Let's select our action here. There are a couple things that we need to set up first. So um, I'm gonna fill out the uh, fields that I can. So the type of things that we're gonna run this workflow on is product. And the schedule date is just gonna be immediately. I want this to happen right now as soon as the user clicks the button. And then the list to run on is gonna be the value of this multi dropdown. Okay, so only the products that they've selected, not all of them. And then API workflow. I need to create an API workflow. Um, the very first thing, just in case that you don't have this enabled, make sure that you go to your settings, and if you go to the API sub-tab under settings, that you have this checkbox checked. Okay, This will expose your workflow API, so you want to have that enabled. And by doing that, what's going to happen is this section down here is going to become available in your page list. So uh, once you check that box, you can click on this here. And now we're in our API workflow section. If you're not familiar with this, this is just a place to have um, server side actions run. This doesn't have a design front end. This is purely for running actions on the server. Um, so I'm going to create a new API endpoint. Uh, and I'm going to call it update product. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and just open up my, have these side by side so that I don't have to keep switching back and forth. So on one, one tab here, I'm going to have my API workflows, and on my other tab, I'm going to go to the actual workflow for the button click, because we're going to flip between the two a couple of times. Okay, so I've created the update product endpoint under API workflows, and if I go over to my index page where the button is, I will see that now that endpoint is available here to choose from. Okay, so what's going to happen when this button uh, triggers this action is that the workflow, this workflow here, is going to run for every single item in this list. Okay, so if you have 50 items, this is going to run 50 times for each item, right? That's how this works. So once this is, hit, once this is uh, triggered, we want to run a couple actions, so let's set those up. So we want to make a change to the product and so I'm gonna add that action there, and we also want to send an email, okay? Now, the thing to change, how do I know what product I want to change so that I can uh, change the cost individually for um, that product specifically? Well, I need to create a parameter, um, and this is under the endpoint here. So I'm gonna call the, this parameter um, product, and it's gonna be type product, by doing this, if I go back to my index page here with the button, now this parameter is available here. 
So I can send that endpoint in the API workflows area some information, some data. So that endpoint can then make changes to the product that it receives, that data that it receives. So now that I've created the, the parameter here, my action has access to it. So it will make a change to whatever product is being sent to this endpoint. Okay, so here I need to fill this out. I need to say uh, for the product parameter, the value is going to be this product. Okay, that's at the top of this list here. And this product just means each product in the list. Again, this is gonna be triggered, um, or actually the endpoint's gonna be triggered for every item in the list. And so the product parameter value is going to be each product itself. Okay, so now we can say on our endpoint, make a change to the product and the cost will be, um, we want to increase, let's see, we want to increase by 10%. So let's actually add another parameter. Let's say increased amount and do number for that. Okay, so we can say the cost for this product is gonna be this product's cost, so the existing cost. And then we're gonna add the increased amount. Okay, so how do we calculate that increased amount? We're gonna do that on this side here. We'll do this product's cost times 0.1. So that's 10%. So the value of increased amount is just gonna be 10% of the uh, product's current cost. So if this product's current cost is $10, uh, the increased amount value is going to be $1. Okay, so then the change that we're making here will be $10 plus $1, right? So now we've got, we have our, our new amount for the product. All right, then we also want to send an email to the product's owner. Okay, oh, we wanna go to their email address. Okay, so now this way for each product, we can send a separate email to that product's owner. And we can use dynamic values with these parameters so that we can say new, uh, let's say product name, and we'll insert the product's name, and then we'll say new cost, and we can do the result of step one's cost, so because that's, that's now been calculated in the first step there. Okay, so now this owner is getting um, an email, getting notified, uh, new product cost. Okay, all right, so now let's preview this. All right, so I needed to refresh my page. I'm gonna make my selections again here. Sunglasses, headphones, and uh, water bottle. Okay, so I'm gonna click on this. We're gonna see the prices go up for these three items here. Click on that. I should have some kind of alert message, but we see this one just went up to $11, this one went up to $26.40, this one up $7.70. Okay, so it looks like it properly added. And if we go into our logs here, we can see that um, the emails should have also been sent. I don't have, those email addresses are test values, but we can see here the very last one. So make change to a product. The cost has been updated to 770. And an email went out to this user, subject new product cost, and you can see that he got an individualized email for the water bottle product and the new cost uh, amount there. And this happened for every product. So there's the headphones one, here's the sunglasses one. Okay, so it looks like it all went through. So again, let's just run through the how this worked really quickly. The button's going to trigger this schedule API workflow on a list action. You defined the type of uh, things that the list is of. So this is a list of products. And then you define the list that you want to run it on. So I'm not running this on all products. I'm running it on the selected products. So that's the value of my multi drop down here. And I choose my API workflow, which is what you select here or what you created here. I only have one, so update product. If you had multiple, this would you'd have a list to choose from there. And your scheduled date, so you can have these things run in the future. So I could add, you know, maybe have this happen in two days from now, but I just went with current date and time so it could happen immediately. And um, 
the parameters are so that you can send extra information to that endpoint so the endpoint knows you know uh, what to update and if there are any additional values like this increased amount where we could help it with the math um, the values there to update it with so I created two parameters one for the product and one for increased amount and when I trigger this workflow, the product is going to be this product, which is just in reference to each item in this list. And then the increased amount is going to be each item's cost times 0 0.1 so that we can get 10%. This will be just the amount we're adding by. And then we go back to our endpoint. We have our two actions here that will run for every single product. We'll make a change to the product. This is again the parameter value uh, and we'll take the existing cost, add the increased amount value there, and then we'll also send an email. All right, so this does have a handful of steps, but um, you can really get a lot of powerful functionality out of this. If you have any questions at all, definitely reach out to me and I'd be happy to look at your workflows and get this working for your specific apps. If you found this tutorial to be helpful or you want to see more videos like this, please leave a comment below or give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and thanks for watching.